All right, this is the second part of the fats and oils video. Um, this is going to be talking about how fats, how stable they are, and what happens to them when they start to go bad. So um, fats and oils start to smell nasty. They get what we call a rancid smell if they're kept too long. Think of like what you've smelled maybe even in your own home, like when you have butter that maybe isn't quite as fresh as it should be. It gets kind of a, a smell that doesn't smell so good. Um, that happens because the fatty acids... Um, are released because the water, the hydrolysis of the fat is happening. Basically what you're doing is you're splitting the fat into its parts. So they're, sp they're split back into the fatty acid, the long carboxylic acid chain, and back to the 1, 2, 3 propen triol or the glycerol. So what joined them together is back split again. So you've hydrolyzed them. Now, it takes place that reaction, that hydrolysis reaction, can be taking place much more quickly when there's certain microorganisms present or certain enzymes. Um, and that enzyme that you would catalyze that reaction is something called lipase. Now, fatty acids that have four, six, and eight carbons, so butanoic, hexanoic, and octanoic acids, the fatty acid part of it, those are released like when we have milk or butter. So we've all, I'm hoping it's nasty, but you've all probably smelled but uh, milk that has gone bad and you know that that smell and I think you might remember me telling you that there's a certain carboxylic acid butanoic acid this one right here that smells like vomit and that's why those those rotten milk smells are so horrible butter is the same way but usually you don't smell it because butter lasts a pretty long time but a lot of us um, maybe have seen that palmitic steric and oleic acids are produced during the hydrolysis of like chocolate and that's when chocolate starts to look oily or kind of greasy and it gives it kind of an odd taste that's because that fat is breaking down in that chocolate and then last here lauric acid gives palm and coconut oil a soapy flavor so all of these these acids are coming out of the fat and they're giving these fats kind of a the fats are breaking down and these carboxylic acids are being produced and giving them weird flavors so, um, reactions of fats. We know that alkenes, double bonds, are much more reactive than alkanes. We've talked about that in the organic unit. So, that means unsaturated fats are more reactive than saturated fats. So, even though unsaturated fats are healthier for us, they're not going to last as long on our shelves as the saturated fats, the ones that aren't so good for us. And the reason behind that is that the double bond, the carbon double bonds, can react with oxygen, okay? We call that auto-oxidation. It can react with hydrogen, which we've learned in an addition reaction is called hydrogenation, and it can also react with light, which is called photo-oxidation. So oxygen is when it's auto-oxidizing, -oxid light is when it's photo-oxidizing. The more double bonds, the more susceptible to the oxidation. So, Auto-oxidation happens when unsaturated fats are just going to react with oxygen from the air. There's no enzyme present. They just, over time, will react with the oxygen from the air. And it forms really unpleasant tasting aldehydes and other carboxylic acids. And that process is called oxidative rancidity. Now, if you don't know what that word rancid means, it just means gross, disgusting, okay? Um, this auto-oxidation happens as a free radical process, which we've talked about again in organic, when you have an unpaired electron, and it can be initiated by light. The light can go in and break a double bond, or excuse me, break a bond, put an electron on each side of the bond, and it's unpaired, and therefore it can go ahead and start reacting, or it could be sped up by enzymes or even metal cations. The more double bonds that you have, the more likely you're producing or you're going to be likely to oxidize. So even though the more double bonds is healthier for our body, they don't have a very long shelf life, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. Now, any extensive oxidation can lead to polymerization, which makes things kind of thick. Viscosity is a resistance to flow. They can turn kind of funky colors like brown. And so that's kind of a clue that your food may be going bad. Um, antioxidants are um, going to be oxidized instead of the fats or oil. They can be added to our foods to help kind of be the front line. So they'll be oxidized instead of the food. 
and that will rate, reduce the rate of the oxidation for our foods. It can also be slowed down by simply refrigerating, as we know that as you take the temperature and lower some, the temperature, the reaction rate will slow down. Hydrogenation of fats. Okay, we've talked about all of these reactions before. So a lot of this food chemistry unit is stuff you've already learned. It's just applying it to foods. So we've learned that double bonds can go undergo addition reactions. And if we add hydrogen across a double bond, you're going to create a single bond of a saturated carbon. So basically, hydrogen can be added across the double bond to decrease the level of unsaturation. You're decreasing the number of double bonds. This is important because it does make your fat more stable because it increases the melting point. It makes it more like a solid. So this is how we make things that are liquid oils into solid oils. So for example, canola oil might be an example that is used in margarine and other spreads. It makes it solidify and uh, hydrogenation makes it solidify and it makes it be a little bit longer stability for your for shelf life. They're done by doing these reactions at high temperatures, 140 to 225 degrees Celsius, and those metal catalysts of either zinc, copper, and nickel. Now, how much saturation you do, how many double bronze you're going to break, is controlled by varying the pressure of the hydrogen and the nature of the catalyst that you're using. Now, what are some advantages of hydrogenation of fats? The advantage is that it takes what would normally be a liquid into either a semi-solid, kind of like margarine, or a solid, like butter, and therefore it makes the melting point more like a saturated fat, which slows down oxidation, which gives you a, a firmer texture, and it controls the feel of the fat, okay, so something like butter. However, the, the more double bonds we have, mono and polyunsaturated fat, fats are better for us. They're healthier for our hearts. When you have partial hydrogenation that can occur, then you can get those trans fatty acids, so trans fats, which are, again behave more like a, uh, a saturated fat, which again are bad for us. So trans fatty acids are hard for our body to metabolize. They accumulate in our fatty tissue. We can't get rid of them very easily in our cells. Um, they increase the LDL cholesterol, cholesterol, and they're not a great source of energy, so they're really kind of bad for us. Now, this is where we're going to end that fats part two video, and we'll start on shelf life in the next video.